All right, there's Frederick. Cool. Looks like the gang's all here. Um, Nikolai, Frederick, I was wondering if you guys might just catch me up what you worked on like two weeks that I was out in the document space. Uh, I was out last week too, so I'm not sure. Oh, unacceptable, Nikolai. Unacceptable. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, so according to the agenda, uh, a week ago, just so far away. <laughs> yeah, I I said I was going to start on the first draft of the release notes uh, that was shown off yesterday. Uh, we may want to go over them again if you're up for it. Um, and Nikolai and I are going to work on documentation for, I guess you say, updating and adding links to the quick start guide and see if we can, if we're trying to come up with a guide for basically the idea for, uh, for a CNF developer for our talk. And we want to try to work out how to, how to tie that into a, um, into a uh, presentation and also into, um, into a future, into a future quick start. Cool. Um, I'm uh, redoing my entire lab right now so I could, beta test these quick start guides for you. Cool, and uh, Watson also has either volunteered or been volunteered to work on videos. And um, those videos are uh, basically like, uh, it, says, it says Watson would like to go through an install and write a concise set of install steps that would be covered in the script, which are four steps. Operator persona, uh, building with the pre-built containers deployed with Helm. The second one would be applying connecting to NSM, a basic version, uh, basically like kernel, using a kernel connectivity to start off with. Uh, in the future, it would be another one where they use a shared memory client. Third one is a CNF developer building something simple for NSM. And the fourth one is something for NSM developers. At least those are the four personas. And a draft script for what NSM is and how do you use it for different personas and then creating a video based upon the script. Uh, and the week before we end up talking uh, about release notes, um, the what is NSM uh, on the on the website. So the, what is NSM needs to be uh, completely changed or or modified. There's actually two things. One of them is the what is NSM uh, document. The second one is we need to come up with a very simple what is NSM that we could stick on the on the front page. And I have some ideas towards that, uh, and see if we can get them uh, see if we can get them included in or not. Uh, yeah, I can help you with some of that stuff too. I can write like a couple drafts and send them to you. Um, have we identified anybody too? who's gonna like just kind of help us give the website itself a facelift? Yes, uh, in fact, we have someone from the CNCF who is working on that. Um, let me pull up his name. Uh, Luke Perkins. Okay, cool. So Luke Perkins is, uh, he's doing an initial draft and then he's gonna, he's gonna tell me when he's ready to, to show off a, um, a draft and I've had some detailed conversations with him about uh, what we're trying to do with NSM and how we're trying to onboard people and personas and so on. So he should be, he should be well aligned with what we're doing here. Um, and I would like to see about getting him engaged with this particular group as well so that we can make sure that uh, we're all in sync and that we can produce content uh, based upon what he's building and he can build his side based upon what we're expecting to put up. Cool. Oh, uh, one thing on the side, actually, uh, Ed has pushed the PR yesterday uh, with the new logo. Uh, I don't know if you have seen it, but um, I mean, the new logo is orange and the rest of the site is not. 
and uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if we should, we should just merge it so that uh, the guy from CNCF can work on top of it, or. Any ideas? I think the site just needs a lot of love overall. <laughs> it still says yeah. change to draft <laughs> next to the what is in this M that I did. And even though it's a draft, it's still showing up. So we, we just need to give it a little TLC. Yeah. So um, Luke should have access to the new logo. So once it becomes available, he's going to slurp it up and then he'll design the website uh, based on that. But um, yeah, for, for now, I mean, we definitely need to make sure that our website is uh, at, at least acceptable. You know, it, it looked like it was done by a bunch of, uh, of uh, infrastructure programmers and not, and not by five-year-olds. <laughs> uh, that is actually, close to, five, to the truth, right? <laughs> actually, a five-year-old would probably do a better job than I would. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I have posted the link to the temporary deployment of the site in the chat. So if someone is interested, you can check it there. With the logo, I mean. I was talking into mute. Um, so yeah, we just need to make sure we're tracking this stuff. Um, Frederick, I'll help you with some of the what is an SM stuff. Like just put some words on paper for you that we can then start to attack. Um, do you or Nikolai want to share now though, and we can start looking at um, release notes and going through those? Sure. So let me grab the release notes then, and I will stick them in the uh, meeting notes, and that's already there. Yeah, the, the release notes are currently in Google. They're not in. Uh, um, they're not in the website yet. Okay, I got a link. So whoever's typing, give me a second. There we go. Let me make sure that that's editable to everyone as well. Yeah, it's that so anyone who has the link can edit it. So my recommendation is to start off with uh, comments. All right, I've shared the um, the uh, document as well. Uh, can it? Can everyone see it? Yep. Cool. So first, um, from the um, from the table of contents, does this look like a reasonable order? Like, does this convey the information that we that we want, or is there any other information that we want to that we want to add in?
I think table contents wise, it looks good. We don't want to make sure that the um, second to last getting started section is really well fleshed out and makes it super easy for people to find what they're looking for. Cool. Um, so in terms of the ordering of it as well, like I stuck downloads at the, at the top. It, is this, uh, does this look reasonable or do you want to stick it at the, at the bottom and have network service mesh release notes up first? I put downloads right after getting started. So you read through getting started and then here's all the links pointing to all the stuff that you might want to go snatch up. Okay, that sounds reasonable. And refresh this. Are you watching Blade Runner in the background? No, I have no idea what the hell that is. I think it's a neighbor, like between using a power tool or something. So, yeah, that's a neighbor using a power tool. Uh, okay. I, I live in Blade Runner, by the way. <laughs> okay, so then I, where I need to change this as well to be slightly smaller. So this is currently heading two, it needs to be heading three. There we go. Any other, let's see a special note from the committers that was, Okay, so how's that? Um, how does that look at this point then? Better. Uh, Nikolai, are, are there any other major components that we need to call out uh, in the reference architecture as well? Let me jump down to the reference architecture. Oh. Uh... Manager data plane registry client controller. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that our glossary is a bit long and probably includes uh, kind of some not directly connected uh, definitions, but uh, yeah, we probably need to. So, so, for example, we don't have here the the, the definition of the network service. Um, uh, I mean, uh, the the network service um, manifest that we we do. I, I don't know. I I don't remember if this was part of the uh, of the glossary too, but. I so mean, have we, we have the we have the domain, so the data plane. We have the registry. We have the client and the controller, but then we don't explain how because all these things are essentially bound together by a thing called network service, uh, which we have. A, yeah. Uh, so you, you mean the, the the network service resource? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting to, to sort of figure out how you want to define sort of running software components versus resources that are used by those components. That's always an interesting thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, so, I agree, but we say a, a reference architecture here. I mean, yeah. So, so for, like, from, yeah. for some context, uh, I skipped ahead as well because I, I feel like this is the area of highest risk. But for context, though, we're saying what's new. Uh, and rather than just list a bunch of pull requests, I, just, I thought, well, we'll do, especially for this release, we'll do it more, structure, uh, more structured and say network service mesh is brand new, uh, explaining what it is, the, the API itself saying that, uh, uh, and just giving a quick description of what it is. And then uh, calling the stuff that we've built at the moment, the reference architecture, because someone could take the API, build a bunch of stuff out and never use a reference architecture and it's still NSM. 
Yeah, I, 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 would, I would tend to actually focus rather than on the resources, because the resources for things like network service mesh are to a certain extent an artifact of the fact that the reference architecture uses Kubernetes API database as its database. Uh, it might be better to focus on the APIs, uh, particularly the APIs that are broadly applicable, right? So for example, the API that network service manager uses to talk to the network service mesh data plane, that API is sort of specific to the fact we're running in Kubernetes. Um, you know, you could certainly write a different network service mesh data plane, but it's probably not what you would choose to do if you were trying to drive a physical network. Um, but some of the APIs, like the remote.network service API and the registry API, um, those APIs I think are generally applicable. Um, and so it may be worth calling those out. And some of those, like the registry API, does return information that is effectively equivalent to some of these resources. Okay, so perhaps what we should do, so these particular ones were the actual applications themselves, but are you saying perhaps what we should do is uh, call out the uh, APIs to look at? Yeah, I, I, in, in particularly the, the, the sort of globally applicable APIs. Um, because okay. the, the, the thing I occasionally see people get confused about is there are some APIs, like I mentioned, the network service uh, manager to MSMD, that are kind of locally applicable. Um, you could totally do it differently if you wanted to and interoperate just fine uh, with the broader network service mesh. Um, but if you, if you don't implement remote.network service and you don't implement the registry APIs, you're gonna have a super hard time getting along with the rest of the network service mesh. Okay, so I think there's two things that we need to do in this scenario then. First is call out the specific APIs uh, globally applicable and the second to do sounds like uh, we need to create a visualization as well showing like where they where they fit in in those global APIs uh, that show only the APIs they don't have to show anything else and that way that people when they see this they'll say okay so that's a cross connect or rather that's the NSM to NSM and and so on I think it's important to start with the global API like paradigm as well. And then specifically calling out that Kubernetes is just the first reference architecture we're working on. So if someone who's like an ECS wizard, you know, and they do all their stuff in Amazon and they like that container, you know, scheduler, they can come in here. Or, you know, if you're a nomad guy, like we, we position it as a tool that can be used across multiple, you know, cloudy type technologies and we just happen to do Kubernetes as our first reference architecture because it's the most widely adopted, something to that effect. I, I think that's definitely a very important distinction to draw because there's a lot of people, <coughs> because we talk so much about Kubernetes, there are a lot of people who do get confused about the broader applicability. If I had a nickel for every time it said, someone had said, this is awesome, could I have this for VMs and physical networks? Um, only to say, look, that actually is the way the architecture is built. We just focusing on the implementation of Kubernetes. Exactly. So we just need to make sure that that's, it's apparent that this is like a reference architecture and we just started with Kubernetes, right? Because um, I, I get the same things and we've got like this small group of people who like to use Nomad for whatever reason and trying to like, you know, sell them on the idea that this isn't just a Kubernetes tool, especially since we put the heptagon right inside of our, uh, <laughs> our logo, we might want to. Um, but it's orange, it. no one will ever notice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's also uh, hidden behind a behind a sphere. No one will ever well, see that. CNCF gave us a home, and you know, Kubernetes is the most widely adopted one. But I, I, there is a lot of people that like use ECS, right? And this well, runs in Amazon, so we need to make sure that people understand that there's global APIs that aren't directly, you know, tied to only Kubernetes. Maybe we should ask them to switch the heptagon to the CNCF square. I like the logo. Me too. Let's leave it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super, super pleased with the logo. And, and in fact, I'm so pleased. I'm just going to drop this into the chat because I'm kind of super happy. Uh, if, you're, if you're curious <laughs> what it looks like on the current site, this is a, a preview from a PR I'm playing with. Yeah, Nikolai sent us this. He's lamenting, though, that the rest of the website is in blue and green. So um, there, there, there is Luke who's running loose, who is, is threatening to, to make improvements in that department. Oh, he's he's already started, and he sent me a uh, uh, he sent me a Netlify uh, Sam uh, <clears throat> where he's where he's going to stand it all up. 
So right now he just has a very basic uh, general template that he starts with. Well, with and, and the other thing I'm super happy about with this link is if you, the favicons work, which means we get a really good proof point that the logo is still usable down to favicon size. Yeah, one, one recommendation, is it possible to change GitHub documentation from the events menu to match the orange and that'll make it blend in a little bit more? I, the darker orange. I don't see why not. One of the things I was going to ask Alex is if she would be so kind as to help us with producing a color palette um, because I do not have the right eye to produce a matching orange. Uh, <laughs> I just don't. And, and I'm not sure how many folks we have in the community who do. Um, so. I have to get my family involved. <laughs> um, cool. So in terms of, um, okay, so so for, so this will, I'm, I'm going to rewrite portions of this to emphasize that the, this is a reference Kubernetes architecture and uh, describe, I'll describe what it is and describe that uh, that the that there's other architectures that can fit in with Kubernetes is not a required component of network service mesh. The requirement is you implement the API. Cool, and so. For the uh, for the reference architecture sections, then uh, I just stole the um, the definitions from uh, from the glossary and uh, made some very minor modifications to make them fit in. What I'm the thing I'm a little concerned about though is. Uh, that there might be some very some things that are specific in the glossary that rely on other definitions on the glossary, so people may not know what like what a remote monitor is or anything like that. So the way to handle that is just put at the very beginning that you know certain definitions may have dependencies and the full definitions list can be found at link to GitHub glossary. I okay. just put add glossary link here and explanation that additional, you know, dependencies can be found there. Okay, then that means that whatever we link to needs needs to be something that doesn't uh, that doesn't change. So while we'll have to find the uh, the well, so Nic Nikolai put you know at least our text version of the glossary in Git, and at this point changes have to come through PR, so it should be semi-static. Okay, in in that scenario, uh, what what I may do then is pick a pick a specific um, uh, Git tag and and link it from there. Yeah, I mean, our, probably our best bet is is exactly what you described. So, use a Git uh, Git tag for glossary and reference the tag. And the tag will make it human readable so they don't have to type a three two seven nine f whatever do we want to go over any of the, the actual definitions themselves or are we comfortable since we've gone over them in glossary already i'm comfortable All right. So I've listed as well that we are CNCF uh, Sandbox member. Yeah. I, I was so delighted to see the call out this morning from the tech press about, you know, saying nice things about us because we're a, an open community. Cool. I haven't, I usually look for never service mesh news in the morning, but this morning I just got up and jumped on the meeting. So I haven't seen it yet. It was on Twitter. It wasn't an article. Uh, thanks for fixing that uh, anonymous lemur. 
speaking of um, Twitter and stuff too, we should have um, something in the getting started guide that's like not just the technicals, but since this is the very first release, like a small little section of different community resources. So when you say community resources, you're, can you give a uh, explanation? So like getting started, you know, we're, we have like the getting started guide, which is the technicals, but there should also just be like, as part of the getting started, um, a, um, like, this is how you get involved with the community. Here's our Twitter. Here's our this, you know, check out our calendar for weekly things. But yeah, like exactly how to get involved. Ah, perfect. Just, just because it's the very first release, right? So when people look at these release notes and like, oh, this is interesting, you know, how do I get involved in this? They can, there'll be a section right there. So I make it a point to how to get involved, to add that into every talk that we do. And I think it should be part of every uh, release that we do as well. Yep. I, I think that's important because, you know, as different reference architectures come out, you know, there's going to be different types of those four personas you were talking about that Watson's going to help us engage as different personas are involved. They might come in five releases in and if we've cut it out at that point, they're going to be sitting there trying to hunt for information versus it just being readily available. Cool. So is there any others that we want? We have meetings, Slack, Twitter, mailing list. Um, Yeah, those are the communication channels that come to mind. Probably a good place to crib from is the community page. Look at which page? Community page on the website. I just put the link in the chat. Cool. So, let's see. Of course, Zoom doesn't make it easy to get to your chat when you're sharing. <laughs> <So. laughs> okay. So we have mailing list, Slack, meeting. Oh, we should stick GitHub on there as well. You could never visit any of these four and still get involved with issues and pull requests. Yep. Okay. And so one of the things that I, that's been bothering me a little bit is uh, I actually like the idea of listing out as many people as we can remember to as part of the as part of the release and saying these are the people who, who have helped us out but one of the problems i run into is that i know for certain that we're there's so many people that have helped us out that we're going to miss important people and so i'm so i'm trying to work out like how to how to deal with this because you know some people will just post things like on the on pull requests and say oh people these people have committed to to the code but I think our community is way more than just like who's contributed to the code. And, and then the thing is, no, absolutely. Not just way more than who's contributed to the code. We're super blessed to have people who very early in the community were picking up the roles that are incredibly important. Um, and, and even things that are not obviously our community. So for example, the unbelievable amount of support that the skydive team has provided for us. I mean, they, they at various points have literally turned features overnight in skydive in response to, wouldn't it be great if we could? Um, and, and so we, we just had just unbelievable amounts of support from a large number of folks. Um, I think inevitably we're going to forget some people, but maybe, maybe we can start working on the list and I guarantee you we will not get it right at first, but we will get closer as we go in time. Does that makes sense to fit? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Because I, I would love to just like be able to list every group, every, every person because like for, for me like every person who's, who's gotten involved and in helped in some way whether it's 
jumping in and producing code and landing committer status all the way down to even just like asking like, you know, what, what does this mean? And it helps us clarify, you know, even if it's, even if it's just a, a couple questions, but oh, it's, yeah. I mean, and, and, and it, all, it all helps. Some of the, you know, like the whole Sarah story literally came because of someone at IBM who was asking hard questions and said, well, how would you solve this use case? And that was like, uh, Mike Spritzer. Yeah, Mike Spritzer. It was like, oh, that is an awesome use case. We're going we're gonna to run with that. Um, yeah, and he showed up for just like one week and asked a couple questions and then. Oh, yeah, no, no. He asked really good questions. And then, and then Sarah happened. <laughs> Okay, so maybe we should do that as a, start off as a separate document, and then we can work out how do we want to. Yeah, it. and I, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to make that sort of world um, world editable so people can share because there are lots of people in the community with lots of experiences, um, and <coughs> I also sort of tend personally towards sort of calling out, um, you know, more 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 personal anecdotes of some of the contributions of people, you know, so. One of the one that comes immediately to mind for me, and this goes way, way back, was um, you know Prem when he was basically you know the, literally the day after the first network service mesh talk was willing to stand in for a, a brainstorming session um, in the Fido Cape and lead that discussion because I, I couldn't make the time that everyone else could make. Um, yeah, and so I, I, th I think these are sort of you know these are the kinds of memories I think we want to codify appreciating in our community. Okay, so I'm gonna add. I'm I'm gonna add this section in just now. We'll have to work out how we want to word it. And um, then we'll we can go ahead and um, I'll add that to the uh, to the link if I can manage to get the participants. You know, participants. There it is. It's under a submenu. Ridiculous. And is that is the the document at that link world editable? Uh, if it's not, it will be. Actually, let me let me double check. Get shareable link. No, no. It, let me let me copy this one instead and see if it's different. Okay, it appears to be the same, except it has equal sharing instead. So we'll use that one. Yeah. says view only when I click on the link. Uh, try refreshing it again. And I will, I see anyone can edit, just me change it there. Cool. So that is our first minute. Our is Kraken can edit. Yeah. <laughs> So add yourself, uh, add yourself down and we'll, uh, and we'll, we'll spread it out and we'll, we'll put together an initial, uh, an initial list and depending on the size of it, we'll find a way to, to call it out anyways, you know. Yeah, and I, I do like the notion of adding sort of specific memories of people's contributions. That, that makes me super happy when I think about it. Yeah, it also helped because if we stuck if we stick Mike's name on this, I said, "Why am I on that?" But then we stick ask questions that led to Sarah's use case being created. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm working. So we, we have, 
Sorry, uh, I, I hijacked your, your meeting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you may have had other things you wanted to talk about. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, we're going over release notes. This is going in the release notes. It fits. It is technically documentation. I'm documenting everybody's name right now. <laughs> Watson, you want your full name? That's good. And don't okay. forget Denver. I put him up higher. Ah, uh, cool. He, re he retired my book than Watson. <laughs> Actually, he just popped up higher up on the uh, Zoom list. The Taylor, who's MIA today. Don't forget uh, Ian. Daniel. Every time I say Ian, I think of um, the guy who played Lord of the Rings doing his little skit with like Sir Ian, Sir Ian. I already spelled Daniel's last name. There it is. So we also have um, Kyle Messery and uh, Sir and Sergey to stick on there as well. I don't know how to spell Sergey's name. I think there's a T in there somewhere. I think it's like that. We'll double check them. We'll look it up real quick. I he tweets sure. a lot. Should be easy to find him. Yeah, M E S T E R Y. Yeah, this this is going to get to be a to get to be a really lovely list, and and I am super ecstatic about us doing this. It really speaks to the culture that we've built as a community. Oh. How do you spell Prim's last name? I think it's Sankar. S-A-N-K-A-R. We'll double check it. Romke. How do you spell Romke's last name? No idea. Yeah, me either. We'll uh, float this at the uh, next network service mesh meeting as well and just say, yeah, add, add yourself in. Eventually, when we get someone who fixes, uh, who primarily focuses on fixing bugs, we'll call them the cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who know the cinematic history there.
<laughs> oh no, this is going to involve nicknames too, isn't it? <laughs> I couldn't oh, this is going to become dramatically out of control, I can see already. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're going to have we're going to have icons to go with it. I think somebody's saying something, but it's not coming over the microphone. All right, friends, I need to drop a little bit early. Um, Frederick, I will help you work on that. What is an SM over the next forty-eight hours? Fantastic, and. Um, I'll uh, I'll go over you with you on uh, offline as to as to what my thoughts are. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Come on. So we still have around uh, a little over ten minutes. Um, so back to back to the document. Uh, I'll ask you the same question, Ed. Uh, as I asked everyone else, since we were not here at the time, is there anything in the release notes that are that are in that are not in here, and what do you think of the ordering? So I think this is actually good, not only because it actually lays out a good set of initial release notes, but <coughs> it sort of drives some of the release motion as well, right? So downloads for version 0 0.1.0 .0 kind of begs the okay, have yeah, we put it somewhere to be downloaded? Um, so, yeah. Have you seen what Istio is doing? I mean, you essentially get an archive with all the Helm charts and some. Well, that is actually super useful. God, God knows we've productively stolen so much from Istio already. <laughs> Take a look at their 1.0 release. <laughs> their 1 oh, there are older releases. There are older releases. Let's see what their 0 0.1 looked like. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, we're so definitely killing it. We are better than this, right? <laughs> Already. But we're, we're, we're different from this. <laughs> Is the initial release. So, so next time someone asks, so, so how does this differ from Mystery, you can say, look, dude, look at, compare the release notes. <laughs> well, May 24, 2017. Okay, can we make May 24 as our release date? That would be great. I mean, like two years later. Uh, oh, that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one from May, June, July, so one year and two months. It's actually not too bad. It took us a year to get our first official alpha release out, so. Yeah. But, you know, starting from community zero to, to, to this. So I think we're doing a good job. Well, and quite frankly, what we have is unbelievably better than what we would have had if we had inverted the order. Completely agree. Okay, so. Um, so the download, so I originally had it up here and then we moved it back down here again, but then I'm thinking maybe, maybe it doesn't make sense to stick it right at the top. So the, so, here, so here's a question. Do we get more value for downloads being after, right at get, getting started? Or do we feel more value on getting it straight at the top? Oh, I would. I always tend to put the getting started at the top, and I would tend to put the downloads under getting start as a sub bullet under getting started, because <clears throat> we all know how engineers think. The first thing they're going to want to know is, okay, how do I run it? They, they may not even bother to understand what it is. Um, so I would sort of put getting started. You've got sort of the, um, in, in, I, I tend to think not so much in terms of download for getting started. But I tend to think in terms of um, day zero, day one, day two, right? Day, day zero is how do you and NSM enable your cluster? Day one is how do you install a network service into your cluster? Day two is how do you consume it? 
Um, and th that's sort of how my brain works. And then we talked about wanting to have a list of demos um, that we could actually point people to. And I think under getting started, we also want those demos. So they, they basically have the most immediate sense of, oh, okay, this is how we do it. And they can get, you know, the, the faster something works and they feel good about it, the, the happier they're going to be. Okay, so. Does that look more, uh, more reasonable? Yep, that, that's definitely a more reasonable, more reasonable direction from my perspective. But please note, I'm, I'm not necessarily known for reasonableness. Well, <laughs> if we weren't be, if we were, if we were reasonable by by years ago, by a one years ago's definition. Oh, so I think something that I would really enjoy some help with on this, uh, if people have time, would be to help fill this document up, make it more clear, make sure that there's no typos, you know, make, making, making it look really, uh, making it look really good. And then when we're ready to do so, we will, we will copy it over to, uh, to GitHub uh, once the release branch has been, well, when the release branch is being cut and we'll start to to throw in all of the information uh, there for the for the release notes so if this looks um, if this looks reasonable this this ordering uh, is so Jeffrey's definitely going to help. Is, is there anyone else that, wa that wants to help with anything, any of the specifics on this? Yeah, it should not be a problem. So Jeffrey and I, I think, can, can uh, handle it. And then what we'll do is next week, we'll, we'll circle back up on the Tuesday and Wednesday meetings and uh, get more feedback on this. So I want to have a couple iterations before we, before we do our release to make sure that it's that it's clear that people are generally happy with it and that we're, and that we're good to go. Um, so I think we only have, I think we only have five more minutes left. Is there anything else that we want to cover? I think we're good. Cool. Well, in that scenario, uh, thank you everyone for your time and thank you, Jeffrey, if you are watching this in the future for letting me hijack your session. <laughs> and <coughs> with that, uh, uh, we'll see you again next week at the same time. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys.